Hi, and thanks for choosing Pebble Host. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use and set up a server on Pterodactyl Panel. So first of all, of course, you're going to want to sign in. So if you've already bought a dedicated server and selected Pterodactyl, you should then get an email titled your server's new login credentials. And this will contain everything we need to sign in. So my username is admin. And then I'll simply paste my password in from the email. We do recommend you do store your username and password in a safe location. This is because our support team may require your username and password in order to help you. All right, so we're now on the panel. And as you can see, we currently have no servers. So the first thing we want to do is click the gear icon on the top. This will take us to the admin section. It will show you all your information here, but the first thing we want to go to is the servers tab. This will help us create a server. And then at the top right, we want to click create new. It will then bring up this menu where we can set up our server. So of course your server name can be absolutely anything. I've just made it Pebble for this. And then of course server description can be absolutely anything you want. So I've made it very simple. And then for the server owner, you want to put in user. You can then click your user and this will pick you. So the server owner will be linked to your account. Then we're on allocation management. So there'll be a guide in the description which explains every single one of these points as I won't be explaining every single one. I'll only be explaining the ones that you actually need to change. So if you're wanting some advanced help, go to the description and there'll be a knowledge base article where you can find all the information that you need. So the node will just so the node will just keep on our dedicated server. The default allocation is the IP and port that your server will be using. If you are going to pick any of these, we recommend that you don't pick any starting with 127. These are mainly used for bungee cord servers. And help to stop an exploit called UUID spoofing. So pretty much choose any of these IPs but these ones starting with 127. So I'll just keep with the top one. And then for additional allocations, we can leave that for now. But this would be used if you were to add a plugin like DINMAP, as that does need an additional port. Next, we're going on to application feature limits. So of course you can change these to whatever you want, but I'm going to show you the recommended settings. So for the database limit, we'll put this on 1. The allocation limit will actually leave at 0. And the backup limit, it's a good idea to set it to 3. Next we're on resource management. For CPU limit, we also recommend that you do keep this on 0, as it will not limit the CPU usage at all. CPU pinning is an advanced option, and it will let you basically pick the threads that can be used for the server. So we'll just leave this blank. Now we're on to memory. So the number that you put in here will be the maximum amount of memory that the server can use. And as you can notice, it is actually in megabytes. So if you wanted to do one gigabyte, it would be 1024. And then two would be 2048. And basically just add 1024 on each time. So let's say we wanted to do six gigabytes, we put 6144 megabytes. Next we'll go on to swap. So swap is actually disabled by default. And we recommend you also do keep it on zero. Next we're on to disk space. We recommend you put this to zero as it makes it unlimited. And then the block IO weight, we also recommend you keep at 500. And then you don't want to enable the OOM killer. What this basically does is when the server runs out of memory, the server will shut down instantly. And we don't recommend you turn this on. Next we'll go into nest configuration. So this is where you pick the game and version that you want. So as you can see, there is a few things you can pick from here. We'll just keep it on Minecraft, and then the egg is the version that you want. So we'll put this on paper. The checkbox down here is if you want to install it manually. We also don't recommend you click this. Next is the Docker configuration. So this you may need to change depending on the version that you want to play. So as we do want to play the most recent version of Minecraft, I'm just going to set it to the most recent version of this. So this would be Java 17. So we we'll keep that at Java 17 and scroll down. So then we can scroll down to service variables, where you can see you can select the Minecraft version. And we'll keep this on latest. And then from here, we can scroll down to click create server. And as you can see, server was successfully created on the panel. And then it will take a few minutes to install. Alright, so our server is now all set up. Then I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the server page. So first of all, just go back to the server tab on the left. It will take you to your server list, where you want to click the wrench icon on the right. It will then take you to this page, where of course you can start, restart, and stop your server. So we'll just start us up. 
it will ask you if you want to accept the Minecraft EU LA. And then just click I accept. And as you can see, the server is now starting up. Alright, so that's the main console. And of course, you can type any command you want in the console right here. So then we're going to go to the file manager. So this file explorer works like our Pebble Host one and also any FTP file explorer you may use. If you upload a file, just click upload. And of course, you can go into folders and do everything that you may need to do. All right, so that's the file manager. You can then go to databases, where of course you can just click create new database. Next, we have the databases tab. And of course, we currently have no databases. We can then click new database and set one up. Next, we're gonna to go to the schedules tab. So on the schedules tab, you can pretty much set up automated tasks for your server to run whenever you choose. So if we click create schedule, you can put in a schedule name. All right, so of course you can miss anything you want, but I'm just going to call it restart server. So next we have the times. This will let you choose how often you want the task to run. So you can set how many minutes, hours, days of the month, month, and also days of the week. So if we were to change minutes, it would mean that this command runs every however many minutes we choose. So currently it's running every five minutes. If we wanted to restart the server every 30 minutes, we would just replace the five with a 30. If we wanted to change the hour, for example, we wanted to change it so it restarts at 5 a.m. and also 5 p.m., we'd have to put both of them. So for 5 a.m., we just put five, and then you put a dot, and then you would put 5 p.m. in 24 hour time, which is 17. So this would now restart the server at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. Of course, you can change this anything you want, but we'll just click create schedule. And then we can click new task. So this will let you pick what the task actually does. If you wanted to run a command, we just click send command. We can then, of course, put the command in here. So let's say we wanted to restart the server. We could simply just put restart and then click create task. So this is a command, but we don't need to put the slash. So let's say you wanted to do a different command and you wanted to change someone's game mode every five minutes. I don't know why you'd want this, but if you did, you'd put the full command, but without the slash. Once you've created your command, click create task. And as you can see, it is next going to run at 7 p.m. today. And this is because we created it at a weird time. So once it has reached 7 p.m., it will then change to 7.30 p.m. Next, we're going to go to the users tab. And as you see, it looks like you don't have any sub users. We can then click new user. So then of course you want to add their email in and then you can set all the permissions that you want to give them. However, this is not quite done yet. You also need to make sure that they are added in the user menu. So to go to the user menu, click the gear icon. It'll take you back to this main page and then go to the users tab on the left. You then want to click create new and add all their information. Next we'll go on to backups and currently there are no backups created. Of course, if you want to create one, just click create backup. Put a name in, you can select ignored files as well, and then just click start backup. Next we'll go to the network tab, where you pretty much want to leave it. Then we can go to the startup tab, where once again we can change the Java version. And then if we go to the settings tab, we now have all the FTP details. Your FTP password will be the same as your panel password. So the password you use to get into Pterodactyl. So that is everything you need to know for your server. But I'm still going to cover a few more things for Pterodactyl. So once again, go back to the gear icon at the top. And I'm going to show the nodes tab on the left. We're then going to click our server. It will then take you to this page. Of course, you can see everything you need to know here. But then we want to go to the allocation tab. This is where you can add or remove different ports. And then finally, we'll go to the nests tab at the bottom. So these nests are used to add different games. So if you wanted a server on a different game other than Minecraft, you would change it here. You can actually make new ones, but we highly, highly recommend that you do open a ticket in our support so that we can help you out. So if you do need support, a Discord link will be left in the description, but we have extremely good and extremely fast support. Anyway, that is all you need to know for Pterodactyl. If this was at all helpful, definitely leave a like and also subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you next time.